O God, who willest that all men should be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth, send, we beseech thee, laborers to thy harvest. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. These words, which I have just read, are taken from the special oration that is said at Mass today on what is known as Mission Sunday. For today, my dear faithful, Holy Mother Church prays in particular for the propagation, the spread of the Catholic faith. When we think of spreading the Catholic faith, we think, and rightly so, of the apostles boldly going forth to preach the gospel on Pentecost, or perhaps of St. Francis Xavier traveling halfway around the world, instructing hundreds of thousands of souls in the truths of our holy faith before admitting them to the saving waters of baptism. Or perhaps we think of St. Francis de Sales traveling on foot throughout the whole territory of his diocese, trying to win back those poor souls who had abandoned the Catholic faith and embraced the heresies of Protestantism. We might think, and in almost all cases again, rightly so, that we ourselves are not called to such labors. But there is another aspect of laboring in the vineyard to which we most certainly are called. We must remember the great saint whose feast we celebrated at the beginning of this month, St. Therese of the Infant Jesus. She is but a simple nun. She never left the four walls of her monastery, but yet she is one of the principal patrons of missionaries. All of us are called to imitate, at least in some degree, the work which she undertook for the spread of the Catholic faith. The first task of a missionary, which we must embrace, is to pray. To pray for the conversion of sinners. To pray not only that there should be more priests and religious, but that they should be good and holy laborers for the harvest, filled with apostolic zeal and burning with love for God. We should pray that those who preach the gospel shall be given the grace to speak words that strike the cold and hardened hearts of their listeners to pray that those most in need of conversion should receive the grace to accept the word of God that is preached to them, or to correspond to some particular grace of conversion that is given to them at some significant incident in their lives, such as a serious accident or the sudden death of someone near to them or even a marvelous deliverance from some danger. Pray for priests. Pray for poor sinners. This is a labor which we ought to make a part of our everyday lives. So important is it for even the preservation of our holy faith in society. The second task of a missionary, which we must also embrace, is to make sacrifices, to offer up to God all of the inconveniences, troubles, and difficulties of our daily lives for some good intention, especially for the conversion of sinners. It is this reason particularly which has led Holy Mother Church to institute the Ember Days, 
three days in each season of the year on which we fast and do penance. The masses on those days particularly speak also of the need for laborers in the harvest. For this reason as well are these ember days occasions in particular on which ordinations to the priesthood are made. Before, however, we seek out additional means of doing penance, such as extra fasts or enduring some voluntary physical discomfort, we must first learn to bear cheerfully, with patience and resignation, those daily crosses which God in his all-wise providence sends to us. Never forget that bearing cheerfully the crosses you have been given is more pleasing to God than any other penance you might take on voluntarily while rejecting your cross. The third task of a missionary, which we ourselves must also do, is to give good example to all by a virtuous life. Many people think that they must preach or give lectures in order to spread the Catholic faith. This is not true. There is no sermon more powerful, no lecture more eloquent than to live as a Catholic should, to live as is becoming of a saint. Even if you never uttered a single word, the power of your good example in being faithful to the duties of your state in life out of love for God, in bearing wrongs patiently, in carrying crosses cheerfully, in seeking first the kingdom of God rather than worldly gain, in carefully shunning the occasions of sin and fleeing from any temptation. This example might lead countless souls to imitate your good example and to themselves embrace a virtuous life. Think of St. Bernard of Clairvaux. He was a rich young man who realized the vanity of this world. And thus he determined to enter the religious life. Caring for his friends deeply, knowing the dangers to which they were exposed at court, he invited them to join him. And join him they did, going on to lead most saintly lives. The final task of a missionary which each of us must do, is to know our holy faith. The occasion might come where you are called upon to defend the faith or to give to someone of goodwill who desires to know God even the most rudimentary explanation of the Catholic faith. Perhaps you might come across the scene of some terrible accident where some poor heathen is at the point of death. Do you know how to rightly baptize a person who is in danger of death? Do you know what such a one must be instructed in before you might even ask him if he desires to be baptized. Many Protestants or other non-Catholics in this sense put many Catholics to shame, for they are better versed in their false doctrines than most Catholics are in their knowledge of the Catechism. Parents particularly have a grave duty before God to ensure that their own children 
are properly instructed in the Catholic faith, lest their children should suffer the shipwreck of their souls through ignorance and the allures of the world, the flesh, and the devil. Today is Mission Sunday, the day on which Holy Mother Church prays that laborers should be sent forth into the harvest. Those laborers, my dear faithful, are you yourselves who must undertake the apostolic works of prayer, self-denial, good example, and the study of our holy faith so that the reign of Christ the King, which we celebrate next Sunday, might be established all the more firmly in society. God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.